Mark McGowan's a busy man. For a bloke who said he had to quit politics because he was knackered, he's got a pretty full dance card. The truth is I'm tired, extremely tired. In fact, I'm exhausted. And he still is, from counting all his money. I love to dive around in it like a porpoise. He's just signed up with Claxton Speakers International. After years of hearing Mark McGowan talk for free... Do we ignore the health advice and therefore have large numbers of people hospitalised and potentially die? We're going to have to fork out upwards of $15,000 for the experience. Fifteen grand. That's not including the business class airfares and five-star accommodation you'll have to stump up for as well. Tell him he's dreaming. And you'll pay even more if you want the platinum package, which includes jokes... I find it hard to believe someone was going for a run and then stopped to have a kebab. But, um, in any... And live entertainment. Just don't heckle him. You're an idiot. Point of order You're will be heard in idiot. silence. Mark will join, and I am quoting from the self-promotion tab on the Claxton website, high-profile leaders, thinkers, change-makers, innovators and media personalities. Mm, I don't know if people will pay 15 grand to hear you talk. It's hard enough to get them to click like. Mark's move on the lecture circuit comes on top of his other post-political gigs. He's on the payroll at Bondi Partners, that's Joe Hockey's consultancy. Joe wants more military contracts and he reckons Mark's naval background will help there. He's joined fellow political refugee Ben Wyatt as a director at employment provider APM. That's run by Perth Dealmaker and Mr Sandy Angie, Michael Angie. APM specialises in helping people who would otherwise struggle to find employment obtain fulfilling jobs, something with which Mark is familiar courtesy of the ALP's faction system. Always look on the bright side of Parliament. He's joined Julie Bishop on Chris Ellison's payroll. Welcome to your new home. And is about to join the board of BHP. Imagine what we can achieve next if we continue to think big. Bucks. How much do you reckon he'll be pulling in? Let's say he does 10 speaking gigs a year with Claxton. There's 150 there. Depending on what deals he gets over the line, he might earn 100k with Joe Hockey. Much more potentially. At least 150 at APM. More if he's on a couple of committees. Chris Ellison wouldn't insult him with anything less than 100, maybe two. And as a director of BHP, he'll be on close to 300,000. Remember, that's all on top of his government pension of 275 grand a year, which, unlike our superannuation, is tax-free and guaranteed for life regardless of what world financial markets do. So Mark's a million-dollar man. Good on him. Oh, and he's about to put close to two million in the bank from the sale of the house in Rocco. <laughs> Though that won't be in his pocket for too long because it'll go to pay off the new place in East Frio. It's hardly the lifestyle of an exhausted man. He was exhausted from Parliament from having to constantly argue a point. Madam Moron. The Minister... You're a first-rate idiot. Pardon? And he was tired of what, after COVID, must have felt like petty small-town politics. The Fringe World Festival will return in early 2022. Bigger and better. He steered WA through the pandemic with, by any measure, the best health and economic outcomes in the world. He was negotiating with and advising prime ministers and world leaders, fated by the World Health Organization and World Economic Forum. And then he comes back to earth with crap like this. Mark McGowan wasn't tired of life. He was tired of us. We've got a bikey associate looking at life. Joshua Duprazel has just admitted killing underworld enforcer Joe Versace. He shot Joe in the stomach and the head in Nangara last year, and he was picked up by the police in Belmont, where he was sitting in a park eating a sandwich which a woman had given him during an earlier conversation about how he was a wanted man who was on the run. Subway, eat fresh. Josh originally denied the charge, but then apparently remembered that yes, he had murdered an underworld enforcer in a shed in Nangara after all, so changed his plea. Oh, oh yeah, 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 I forgot about that. Josh had already pled guilty to a reckless driving charge, telling the magistrate, and I quote, I just want to get it out of the way, cop the fine or whatever the charge is, I'll be honest with you, I'll be in jail for the next while, so driving is not really on my to-do list anyway. <laughs> so Joshua, who wanted to be a rebel, killed a bloke who was clearly tight with senior rebel Joseph Raimondi, given Raimondi was comforting the Versace family at the scene of the crime, goes on the run, then tells a random woman in Belmont that he's the guy everyone's looking for. Also, do you mind if I have a bite of your tuna on rye? 
and despite originally pleading not guilty to murder, tells a magistrate hearing his speeding case that he expects to be in jail for a long time on an unrelated matter. How much time is he looking at? 25 years. Mark McGowan was member for Rockingham since 1996, so that's what? 27. Which means he really would have got less for murder. I'm Ben Harvey. For more up late, click the subscribe button below.